The primal spirit is beyond the polar differences. Here is the place whence heaven and earth derive their being. When students understand how to grasp the primal spirit, they overcome the polar opposites of light and darkness and tarry no longer in the three worlds. But only he who has envisioned human nature's original face is able to do this. That's deep. So welcome again to The Secret of the Golden Flower. As we unravel this mystery, we have to penetrate deeper and deeper into the primal nature, uh, original mind, pure mind, Nibbana, non-dual reality. Now, just because it's non-dual doesn't mean it's one either. Uh, because, for example, the name of the Jain logic is Anekatmavada. Anekatma. There's no one thing. There's no one way of looking at things. So it's not two, but it's not one either. Very hard for our minds to understand. Actually, it's impossible. <laughs> the poor mind is overwhelmed by the multiplicity of points of view. And so people try to choose one and then fight for it. That this is the ultimate truth. Huh? <laughs> And so people have been fighting with one another since the world began. So now we have reached a condition in society that I predicted would happen more than 10 years ago. I wrote in 2003, I think it was, or 2004, an essay called The Ontological Time Bomb. And basically the premise of the research was something is going to happen that upsets everybody's understanding, that blows everybody's mind so bad that they will lose track of meaning altogether. And it's happened. And what is it? Social media. Everybody's on social media, right? Everybody's got to be on social media, right? But what do we get? Uh, as Marshall McLuhan famously said, the medium is the message. So cute cat pictures, huh? beautiful girls in tight-fitting outfits, and then short messages taken out of context. Now, because context is meaning, something taken out of context has less meaning. So all the nice quotes from this or that or whatever are not going to bring understanding, have not brought understanding, cannot bring understanding because they're taken out of context. Now, back in the old days, you know, like uh, 10 or 15 years ago, there used to be conversations on the internet where people could hold forth at great length, and did, <laughs> about their particular views. And this was better. This was much better. This was really what the internet was all about. A conversation where nobody could interrupt you, where nobody could stop you, where no one could distract you from what you're trying to say. But that's gone now, except maybe on a few blogs or small forums here and there. Everything else, meaning is all chopped up into little atomic pieces. 
And because of that, nobody can grasp even the point of view that the statement or quote is trying to present. It just says, hey, there's this point of view, and that's it. So, of course, I've been posting longer things, but nobody reads them. Just like these little 20-minute videos, you know, the average view is about seven or eight minutes. Now, in seven or eight minutes, what does that mean? A few people are watching it all the way through. Most people are watching two or three minutes, and then they're gone. Okay, and then they're going to say, well, I wasn't getting anything from it. Of course you're not getting anything from it. You're not watching it long enough to get the context. And like I've been saying again and again and again, the context for this video is every previous video. So if you really want to understand what we're trying to say here, the real meaning of it, you have to go back to the beginning and slog through the whole thing, you know, hours and hours of dull, boring videos about real truth. <laughs> well, guess what? I don't think anybody's going to do that. So what we do instead now is we form a community where people can communicate at length and can create context and can experience meaning to relationships built on the concepts presented in this series about enlightenment. Now, the world situation is at an extreme point. There isn't going to be a revolution. No, but there is going to be a collapse. It's already happening. And it's been happening now for some time. It's the collapse of meaning. Nothing means anything anymore because it's all taken out of context and chopped up into little bits. So what to do? Well, we're taking action right now. We're forming a community of people who have an interest in this subject matter. And it's going to be a small, limited community by design. Maybe seven or eight people. That's all. And then the door is going to close. And there won't be any new invitations for some time. Why? What we're trying to do is create a core group a core group means people who are in constant touch with one another through Skype. So I'm willing to give up, you know, three or four hours of my day every day to talk with people on Skype. And the first people I've invited are the people who are active and making comments on these videos. Why? Because they're the ones who have been following from, from the beginning or from a long time ago. And they do understand the context. And they are practicing the methods. I've seen evidence of that in their context. Sorry, in their comments. <laughs> because the comments fit the context. So people who make off-the-wall content comments that don't fit the context but don't even get posted. So the contents of all the comments you see are in line with the context that we've established. That's deliberate. The other thing is, you need help with your practice. There is a certain catalyst, okay? Anybody can make a procedure how to meditate. In fact, they've gone way over the top with this in the Buddhism, that you have to sit a certain way, you have to breathe a certain way, you have to eat a certain way at a certain time of day, and so on, and so on, and so on. Ad nauseum. It's ridiculous. Uh, when I was in the Vedic monasteries, there was something called a, a, like a guidebook for meditation. And this guidebook, it begins at the moment you wake up. And it goes through the whole day telling exactly what you should do, what you should think, even what you should feel. It's called Archana Padati. 
This is nuts. This is crazy. It's living by the book instead of living your real life. So you shouldn't have to live in this crazy world. No one who's intelligent, no one who's sane should be forced to live in a world that's gone mad. So even though we can't like just check out and go to another planet or live on an island somewhere, that wouldn't work anyway. What we can do is we can form an alternate reality. We can create our own community and we can have extensive context built up within the community that gives us meaning, that gives us purpose, gives us support, understanding, uh, exchanges of love. Uh, what is love if not understanding, meaning, truthfulness? deep sharing. Uh, meaning is also value. Like we say, you know, this uh, house or this relationship or, or this uh, path or something really means a lot to me. What are we saying? It's very valuable to me. So we can build value in this community by creating context, and then we can share that value later on. So the first seven or eight people who come are for creating this context. And that will go on for some time. We have to build a website, we have to build an affiliate program, promotional program, uh, an investment program, and so on and so many things to increase the value of the community create meaning, to create value. I want this to be the first spiritual community ever that benefits people financially for joining. In other words, it's not only a spiritual cooperative, it's also a financial cooperative. And it creates value through investments. And to understand how this works, you're going to have to join. And to do that, you're going to have to contact me directly for an invitation. But it's going to fill up really fast. We're already half full, or more than half full. So if you can grasp this meaning of the primal spirit, remember the primal spirit is Tao. It's beyond yin and yang. It's beyond male and female masculine and feminine. It's beyond right and wrong, good and bad, light and dark. It's beyond all that. It's the ultimate refuge. This world is falling apart, has been falling apart, will fall apart. <laughs> That's what it does. It changes. And right now it's changing in an extremely radical way, an unpredictable way. What's going to happen between now and the end of this year is going to blow everybody's mind. The pressure is on. It's like the I Ching describes a situation called critical mass. And it, it gives an analogy. It says there's a roof being, a roof beam, huh? like a piece of wood. And it's supported at the two ends, but it's free in the middle. So what's happening is there's too much load on this beam. The beam is sagging. <laughs> so what is the beam? The beam is our consciousness. It's our meaning, our understanding of life. And it's sagging, it's in trouble. It's going to collapse. This is a very dangerous situation. It could lead to global psychosis of war. It's happened in the past, and it could happen again. What are enlightened people going to do? Because we're already isolated, we're already alienated, we're already so different from the people surrounding us that for all practical purposes, there's no communication, no understanding. We have to get together with each other to be strong, 
to create value, to create a way out, a shelter, a refuge that will not cheat us. So it has to be built on truth. There's no better truth than you can find in the secret of the golden flower. There's no better master than you can find in Osho. So we take these truths as self-evident. <laughs> and we're not trying to cause a revolution. We're not trying to overthrow anything. We're trying to create a little shelter for ourselves where we can feel at home, where we can feel safe, where we can be open and loving and trusting and not get cheated. So we can do that. And that gives us the space we need to realize this primal spirit, to realize our nature our original nature, our original face. And what is original face? Emptiness. Nothingness. Anatta. Anatma. No self. This is enlightenment. It's always been enlightenment. And you've always had it. Now, you can recognize it and start to get its benefits. And the first benefit is called stream entry, and it's wonderful. <laughs> I got stream entry through this very process, the secret of the golden flower, back in 1984. But because I was not well educated in Buddhism, in the via negativa, huh? I knew positivism via positiva, from the Vedic path, but I didn't know the Buddha's path, so I didn't recognize what happened to me until much later. Only then I realized, wow, that was stream entry, and it was wow, too. It was a big wow. You can get that, too. You can get it within 100 days if you practice full-time and you know what you're doing. So only the person who has grasped this truth, who has seen this original face, is free. Free from what? Well, it's more like free to what? Free to become or not become anything. To go anywhere or not go to just be there. This is deep, and we'll get into all the psychological and spiritual deep topics later on. But right now, this is an emergency situation, and so we have to respond timely. I'm saying that between now and the end of the year, things are going to get really crazy. And you're going to see, it's going to open up in front of you and in front of everyone this emptiness, this space of total uncertainty and chaos out of which anything could come. And something will come, something unprecedented, something unanticipated, something unpredictable, a black swan, a change out of left field. And you won't believe it at first. You're just going to be like, what? <laughs> But that's going to become the new normal. So get used to it. How do we deal with it? We have to form these small communities, these small communes, and not according to any model that has ever been used before. Huh? Even Osho, as much as I love and respect Osho, and as much as he benefited me and many, many others, his model of a community is unsustainable. Why? Because it depends on other people working and contributing to the commune without being part of the commune. And it's just something that doesn't sit right with me to call a community a commune 
And yet you have to pay to be part of it. And then if you go dig deeper and you find that the actual business structure, the legal structure of the thing is a profit business, huh? a privately owned business, then it's like, come on. So somebody's making a lot of money off of Osho's good name. Now that should stop. That's not a good idea. Everyone's now, all the senior sannyasins are dressing in, in, in the white robes like this and opening up these, what I call them, McOshos, huh? like McDonald's, except the Osho centers. And they're offering the Big Mac meditation retreat. Huh? You go for the weekend, pay an outrageous amount of money for accommodations, get a few meditations, and then you go back to your dungeon. It's just out, out of the frying pan into the fire, from one dungeon to another. It's not really any transformation. Nothing has changed. I want to make a community that actually changes the deal, huh? that gives a new deal. And I did this before. The last time I created a community, we, once we got things going and we had a little cash flow coming in from selling courses, not just donations, we were selling something of value, selling courses. We took some of that money and some donations and we invested. We invested mainly in gold and silver, I mean physical gold and silver. And the timing was pretty good. Gold and silver went up and we were able to actually maintain our monthly expenses uh, simply by the profits of these investments for, what was it, almost three years. So the way it worked was that when someone joined the community, they would give a deposit. I think at the time it was like $3,000, something like that. And then we would put that in the fund and we, we would invest the fund. And then when someone left the community, we'd give their deposit back. Meanwhile, we also had a hedge against any emergency. Hmm? Somebody, you know, um, tripped over a cow. <laughs> Or, you know, ate too many hot chilies and uh, wound up going to the doctor or something. We had money to cover it. So then nobody had to worry about money. Nobody had to worry about a place to live. They could put their full attention on their sadhana and make as much spiritual progress as they could while they were part of the community. Now, we're not at that stage yet. We're not even near that stage yet. But this is something we can approach. We can start now. So it's not going to be exactly like what we did before. It's going to be something different. It's always going to be different. <laughs> it's always going to be changing. But you can get involved now. And we can start to create a new kind of community that's never existed before. Where you make money by being part of it. Okay, You don't have to worry about a job. You don't have to worry about some awful commute and living in some horrible city and you, know, you can get away from all that nonsense. So this secret of the golden flower is meant to benefit you, not only spiritually, but also materially, because without being free from material cares and worries, how can you make spiritual advancement? The times when I made the most advancement in my life were times when I had saved up a bunch of money and just took time off, a whole block of time, like three to six months at a time, or even more. If I went to India, take a year, a year and a half, two years off. Huh? I took three years off and went and explored the South Pacific after 1984, after my enlightenment experience. I just bummed around from island to island, lived on the beach, had a backpack with a tent, you know, rode on tramp steamers and canoes and <laughs> whatever I could find and, and visited all these really cool places in the South Pacific. 
So real spiritual advancement comes when you can totally concentrate without having to be distracted by these mundane annoyances like money. There's a way we can organize things, but the critical thing is that everyone cooperates, that everyone is willing to be a team player. Uh, there's no room for individual egos on this train at all. Okay, and so I'm inviting the people that I trust, that I have seen are uh, cooperating nicely, that are getting it, that are understanding things properly. And uh, of course, uh, there are going to be attacks by our enemies. Uh, the people who propagate false understandings, the old-fashioned spiritual paths that don't work anymore, uh, that don't produce enlightened people, that aren't fun, uh, are going to be on our case. But as long as we're not doing anything illegal or morally wrong, there's nothing they can do to us. We're following Osho, so we're open about everything, transparent. Any question you can ask, we'd be happy to address it, truthfully, honestly, openly. But those who are trying to stop this train are going to put up all kinds of smoke and mirrors, but that's all it is. Uh, it's like if you're going along in a train and then you see in front of you another train coming in, at you in the opposite direction. What are you going to do? Slam on the brakes? No, it's just a mirror. It's just a mirror. It's just words. Uh, these people are simply bullshitters. The people who talk against us. They don't have any evidence. Huh? I was a Tantra teacher. Some of my students wanted to learn Tantra, so I taught them. Big deal. So that's over. That's finished. That game is off the table now. Of course, they'll still try, but they're not going to stop us. So what we're doing now is contacting and inviting people one by one based on their reciprocation on the comments here. Okay, so if you want to get involved, the best way is to get involved. If you want to get the benefits, the full benefits of the secret of the golden flower, the full benefits of the community based on this teaching, then the best way to get involved is just to get involved. Start communicating. Use the comments here to ask your questions. And we'll go from there. So, looking forward to getting to know you all better.